this is the last video and before we start the tutorial I want to cover something what I didn't say in the previous video so right after you install the Google library for PHP we should enable the Google Analytics API to be able to use that library to be able to pull that organic traffic um, the previous on the previous video I wrote on the description there is a link and and I showed there I tell you how to enable this Google Analytics API but here right now I can show you how to do it and if you have any errors from the previous tutorial and you don't know why this error appear it may be because you didn't enable your Google Analytics API now in order to enable it you should go to console.developers.google.com and then you should have a drop down menu on the top here where you can choose your uh, Google um, you can choose your account service account you you want to, for which you want to enable enable the API if you have just one then it's gonna choose as a default and then go to your library tab and then on the right side here you should have where is the other popular APIs you should have analytics API click on that link and then here you see a button right now my API is um, enabled and I can disable but if your API is disabled you should have a button which says enable and click on that button and enable your API and after that just go back to the previous to the video and learn how to and see how to pull that organic traffic so you'll understand how it works now in this video we will pull the data from our Google Analytics dashboard for the past six months so if right now it's September, then we will have six months, which is September, August, July, June, May, and April. And we will show that data on a chart. And there is a really nice library, JavaScript library, which is high chart. And this library has examples here. I want to show the example I use for this dashboard. So this is the example I use for, for the dashboard. And then you can see the source code for this chart too. And I want to show you how to install this library and how to work with it. So in your head tag, in your head section, you should call these libraries. So the first one is charts.js and the second one is exporting.js. Now this exporting.js file, it, it just, you need it if you want to export this data, this chart in a PDF file or as an image. If you see here, there's a button which allows you to doll on this chart in a different, or you can print it too if you want. If you don't need this button, just remove this file from here and don't call this, and don't call it. Now you should have a div ID. So as you remember, I had few tutorials about Ajax and how that Ajax works and especially in this tutorial and about this dashboard the login form it works using Ajax and you submit that form using Ajax and Ajax gives you an answer or sends you an answer and it shows that answer in a in a div class the same thing is for this chart library it shows you the chart in this div and of course you can change the ID from here you can you can write anything you want but you should be careful because on, on the JavaScript code here you should change it you should also change this container name <clears throat> if you change it here you should change it here as well now let me explain a little bit how this chart works so right now we have five columns for each kind of uh, product so they have they have fruits here the first one is apples and then you see apples oranges pears grapes and bananas and and of course here are three persons the first one is john jenny and joe let's find them so they're right here john jenny and joe and they have numbers here there's a data and this these numbers are the data for each column. So there are five columns for apples, 
for oranges, as I told you, for each fruit. And they have five, John has five for apples. Let's find out John, and John's color is blue, so he has five. And then for oranges, he has three. And each person has for each columns. I just want to show you how these columns are uh, on this JavaScript and how you can change the data for each column. Now, in our case, we will replace the fruits uh, with our months. So there we will have September, August, July, June, May, and then there should be April. All right. For now, we just have on the page the organic traffic for August. We stop here and let's go ahead and let's continue. Let's go to our Google folder and let's open our get data PHP. And then let's go back to our core folder and then here let's open the header.php. Now, for now, we have two functions. We get the organic traffic, this function I explained in the previous tutorial. And then we just show it in our output data. Now I will delete those two functions and I will replace them with the new functions. I have more here. So my PHP file right now looks like this. I have that class. This first function is the same thing. Initialize analytics. This is configuration for API. And then I have the get profile ID, which gets the in service account ID. And then I have the organic result. So this is the trick here. I have a organic result function and I have a non-organic result function. And that's how actually I build that chart because I have a function and this function gets the organic result for a month, let's say for, for September. And then I get the non-organic result for September as well. And then I show them on the chart. Now this is how my print results function looks like. So I have this div ID container, I told you, which I told you in, in this div, I will have the result from the high chart library, which will gives me that result and it's gonna be a chart. And here is that JavaScript code as you saw on that website. Uh, this is the div ID where it will show the result where it will show the chart and then I have colors for each kind of result. So the first one is the organic traffic and then the second one is the non-organic traffic. And I have columns. This is the kind of chart you can choose also. If you go on that website, highchart.com, you can read more about different examples and you can add more stuff on this chart as well. Now this is the first. Here we get the last six months. But let me just show you how it looks like. If you want, you can type it from here right now. And then I will come back and I will explain everything, how it actually works. Okay, this is the output data. Let me go back to that chart. Let me see where I can find it. All right. So let me explain you this function. This is the output data. This is the main function actually. It does the the main functionality. You saw there I have two other functions. The first one is organic result and the second one is non-organic result. Now let's focus on those two functions. Don't, don't don't pay attention to the print result yet. If you copy it already, it's good. But we have two two functions: the organic result and non-organic results. And these functions they have four parameters. The first one is analytics. This is the configuration to the API, as you as you already know from the previous video. And then we have the profile ID, and then we have the start, 
date and the end date. So here we send for for which month we want to get the the organic traffic. And for the non-organic traffic, the same thing. We have the configuration, profile ID, and start date and end date. Now let's go back to our function. We have the output data. And this function, we call this function, of course, in our user class. Where is the dashboard function? We have output data right here. We didn't we don't change anything in this tutorial from this file, so I will just close it. Just leave it as it was in the previous tutorial. Alright, now we have a variable and we assign the configuration, which is an initializing analytics, and then the profile ID, we get the user the account ID. And then we have two other variables, which is organic and non-organic. And I assign an empty array for each of these variables because they will have a lot of data and I need a structure for them. So that's why I made them arrays. And now I have a four here. So this four gets the last six months. This is a PHP functionality. And in order to get that, you see there is... Um, number five here so it calls this function it it, it runs this for six times because there is condition it, it should be bigger or equal to five to zero which means from zero to five it's six it's six time and then so we have start date <clears throat> that's how you get the first the first day of the month of each month you should use this uh, str to time. This is a PHP predefined function, and then I get the. This is the last day of the month. That's how you get the last day of the month. And the end day, we shall, we assign to the to a d variable a new object, which is the date time of the first day of that month and then we have the end date and this end date it shows me the it, it assigns to the end date variable actually the last day of the month so if we're, we are on September it's gonna have the first September and then the last the first day and the last day of the of the month and then you see here I have the, the organic variable which is an array I assigned an, an empty array and then to the second one which is non-organic it's also another empty array should be so if we are on the first month right now <clears throat> which is what should be the the sixth month actually from the right side which means September then we call this function and we we make like a, an array and on the first column of this array or on the first place because it's five so on the fifth on the fifth arrow of this array we're on the fifth place we assign the first call of this organic result function or the first result of this organic function so we call those two functions as many times as this um, four runs right here so it's gonna run six times and it will have for each time it will have a different month different start start actually we will have the start day the same but it will have the end date different because there are months which have 30 days there are months which have 31 days so that's how we get the organic and non-organic traffic for the last six months now let's go i want to show you how to sh how to pull this non-organic result because i thought that's going to be interesting for you <clears throat> so it's the same thing as it's for organic results but on the organic results on the filters you see here we want to get the medium equal to organic <clears throat> now for the non-organic traffic on the filters we make it different than organic you see that's how we get the non-organic traffic because there are just two kinds organic and non-organic so after that we just return now let's go to our print result so after we run all this stuff, we have those two arrays and they are full of data. And they should have six rows right now. And for each row, there should be a result for each month. And then after that, we just 
print the, the result is the print result function now let's go ahead to our print result function and we have two variables organic and, and non-organic so we send the we send those two arrays to this print result function when we call it we call it with those two arrays they are full of data right now and then we check if those arrays have any data inside then we show the chart and then we have here our container id this is we have a div id which is container and in this container we have a little bit of styling we have a display table and then you know, we make it full width and some dimensions merging zero and center it and then here container you can change if you change the name of this div id you should change it here too because that's how high chart knows where to show the chart and then two colors for each for each kind of uh, traffic and then we have what what the type of the chart we will have columns and then we have a title total visits so if we go to this one there is stack column chart and it's you see here the text that's the title and then we have categories this is the how many how many the name for our for our columns so they have fruits here but we have the last six months so that's how we show here the the last six months we got the first day the yeah that's how we show them the last six months here we got a four as in the previous cycle we have and then we show just the the month and the year and after that we have <clears throat> total visits by month on the left side of the chart if you see here on the left side total uh, fruits uh, consume consumption anyway that's the title from the left side in our case it's gonna it, it will be total visits by month and then this is the font style for the text and this is also something by default i just took it from there and then here the total as well as i left it as it was there this option is the same thing and then here we have the series so we have the organic visits and non-organic visits those are the persons from from this example so there is john uh, Jenny, and joe in our case is organic visits and non-organic visits and we show the data from organic if you see here i have a four that's how we we get the data from this organic array using another four so that's how we show the session the organic visits for the organic visits and then for the non-visits and non-organic visits that's how we, sh we we just get the data from the non-organic variable and we show it in this way you already know what this why i put this like that because this is um, a big object it's a big array it's multi-dimensional here and in case those two arrays are empty we just show no results found all right let's save this file and let's go to our header.php because i didn't call here the high chart library so i should copy this code from here and paste it here it didn't copy the whole thing but i will leave just the high chart js i will save it and then if i go back to the index.php you should log in of course and i refresh this page it should show me a chart right now and there it is so this is the September non-organic visits organic visits and then for August for July for June for May and then for April and we don't have that button here but if you want let's actually let's see just want to show you that it really works let's save it and then let's refresh it again now we should have a button here which will 
allow us to download this chart all right there it is so when you click there you can print this chart if you want to like this or you can dole on as a png or we can as a pdf document and you can open them yeah that that's that's the only reason you need to require or you need to call this exporting.js file all right guys um after you you have done this chart and you you know a little bit of this google api now if you really want to continue building this dashboard i recommend you to create a database and save this data save this data you get for each month in your mysql database and then just update that data from the database two days i mean two times a week or one time a week because it's it takes really long time you see if i refresh the page it takes a long time to load all that data from the google api because there's this browser has a, a query to the to, to your server and then from the from your server it goes another query to the google api server and that's why it takes so long and when you have a lot of data here when your website has a lot of traffic then it it it's low down i mean it takes more time to pull all the data from your dashboard and there is a, actually a limit from the google analytics dashboard so that that's why you should create a database and save all this data in your database and this is going to be much faster this is a good point you can create a database you can include many apis in in a single database and you can have access to multiple data from different services just in one dashboard and that's the reason of this of this tutorial so you can you can use it because i also had a project to build and i i didn't find so much information about google api there is not so much information or examples on how to use this google api using using a php programming language um, so that that's the reason of this tutorial i just want i want you to have like a, a start point where i just show you a little bit how how you can work with this api and then after that you just know where to go and where to learn more you you are you know what's the right way and you don't spend that that much time as i spent to learn all this stuff by myself all right guys if you have any questions for if you need help just leave a comment um and there maybe somebody else will answer but if not i will i will try to do my best and help you with this dashboard and thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorials